this out of the way. It's, on a, it's out of frame anyway. Uh, That's fine. I seen it. Want to smoke? Uh, but I just finished one, but I, I have some here. We'll all smoke. It'll be great. Doors are closed. We can smoke a lot. <laughs> Hot and smoky. Hey, we can do something. <laughs> we actually stole these from the hallway. Okay. Just don't here. say nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. My house will be grass. Right, I'm rolling. You're rolling. Bye. Okay. So, so what was it like playing up there with Jeff, huh? Well, like I was saying, um, when I was 11 or 12, 1976, um, I saw the Rocks tour, and Jeff Beck was open for uh, for Aerosmith. <laughs> At the end, the, for the encore, they played Train Captain Rolling. Now, <laughs> now at that age, you know, Aerosmith and Jeff Beck were my heroes, yeah. you know? And I was on stage today with those very same people. <laughs> and I told myself back then, I said, I'm going to be there someday. You know, not necessarily be on stage with him, but mm. just be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was there. <laughs> and and it, um, it didn't really hit me until like halfway through Train Captain Rowan. And I'm looking at Jeff Beck, you know, Stephen Tyler, Joe Perry. <laughs> and then there's, you know, Slash and Gilby, Matt, and me. What am I doing up there? You know, but it, it was... And they were having a blast because it was it, it, literally a blast from the past for them, yeah, you know? Right. And we were coming up with different ways to play the song, and they were all into it. And it's just, it's a dream come true, you yeah. know? And um, if I seem a bit giddy, there's a reason for that, you know? <laughs> I'm still in, in constant amazement. I'm just, yeah. in, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say, you know? Did Jeff make any mistakes? Do you think he makes mistakes? blow any lines or anything? Who? Jeff. I hope so. <laughs> He's human. <laughs> yeah, he made some mistakes. <laughs> He's got some, we got, we're, we got in our rehearsal tonight. And, and like I said, uh, last night, here I am in my, in my hotel room showing Jeff Beck a song. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> on his guitar. <laughs> Jesus. And it's like something's wrong here, you know? God. Mm. He's a quick learner though, right? Oh yeah, no, he, he, he I hope so. <laughs> no, he, um, no, he, he already knew the song, there was just a couple of things, yeah. you know. But, I mean, I just thought to myself, um, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five, two, a year ago, if I would have <laughs> seen myself showing Jeff Beck a song on the guitar, you know, people would thought I was, I was nuts. Jesus. So. How did this whole uh, pay-per-view thing come together? The band just sit down one day and say, well, we can do this, let's we do it. We were approached. We yeah. were approached with it. Um, um, and, and also, I, I would really like to say we're not doing it for the money. We're doing it for, like, the money I'm making, I'm giving it to charity. Uh, what charity? Um, um, a couple. My mom, um, in Seattle, I'm from Seattle, she works for the homeless. Yeah. So I'm giving some to the homeless and, to, and the other half to the Red Cross. Yeah. So, because I need a lot of help right now. Yeah. Um, um, where was that? <laughs> <laughs> You're giving the money from this pay-per-view to, oh, to oh, charity. Oh, the, how we got approached with the pay-per-view was um, the, who, the powers that be for pay-per-view um, approached us to do it. Um, we thought it was a good idea to simply get to the 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 audience that we can't get to physically yeah right right um it's simple as that really i mean we can't play everywhere and you know in the states we can't we just can't yeah. you know um, we've been touring now for a year and and over a year and you know um we've still got a ways to go with the metallica thing yeah right and you know it it People think it's a glamorous life, you know. We're getting we're getting tired, all right. We're really getting tired, and so we can't play every place. So that's that. How was this thing in Prague? How did that work out? Was that unusual? Was it strange? Uh, yeah. They gotta learn about toilet paper there. <laughs> I'll bet they do. Um, no, uh, Prague. It was it, the the crowd was great. Yeah. Um, and the people were very interested in um, 
the American culture and talking to us. Yeah. They, they spoke English very well. Where it was strange was East Berlin, which is now all Berlin. Yeah. Um, um, you know, I, I, I shouldn't say, you know, anything. Um, they don't speak English. Well, they shouldn't because it's Germany, <laughs> you know. But um, West German, on the, on the west side, they speak perfect English. Yeah, right. You know, um, on the east side. They speak Russian. Yeah, and they have those little cardboard cars. <laughs> They're actually made out of plywood and paper mache. You know that, right? No. Yeah. The guys from Faith No More got one for free. Somebody just gave their car. Wow. <laughs> and they drove it all the way up to uh, Cologne. <laughs> so <they're>, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> They're made out of plywood and paper mache. Wow. God. And they just threw it away when they got to Cologne, I guess, right? Yeah. And they just like, left it on the side of the road. <laughs> Jesus. The but it's it's very strange there, man. <laughs> I, w I went to the, to the um, what's it called? The uh, dead zone? or The, um, yeah, the, where they, they, they would shoot to kill. Oh, no man's land kind of. Yeah. Land, yeah. Very bizarre. <laughs> and Checkpoint Charlie. And yeah. We've seen a lot of stuff. Oh, I mean, it's not like we haven't been to Europe before, but this this time we've been able to spend some time and, you know, um, and really kind of, I, I've taken time to learn about the different cultures, and it's, yeah. and it's really interesting. It's very educating, you know. Yeah. What do you make of Paris? Well, we've only been here since last night. Um, let me see. Well, it's overcast. And, uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Um, um, I'll, I'll find out. Yeah. we got two days off here, so... You think, how did you go about picking these guests that you have? I mean, it's kind of an unusual assortment of people back in Aerosmith and Lenny Kravitz. Were they your like, first choices? Or? Well, with Lenny, we are a family. Hmm. You know, um, and with the Aerosmith guys, with Stephen and Joe, also it's like a family. Yeah. You know, we toured with Aerosmith. Jeff Beck um, was a godsend. I don't know how <laughs> we got him, but we did. <laughs> And he's into it, so, you know, uh, it's really overwhelming for me. Um, yeah. You know, because I'm just, I'm a regular guy, you know, <laughs> and, and this is really grandiose for me, you know. It's like, wow, I'm playing with Jeff Beck and, you know, and... and a lot of guitar players on stage. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of guitar players. Yeah, and I'm the only bass player. <laughs> Excellent. You're playing a little drums too tonight, right? Mm -hmm. So you're out there doing that. Yeah. And um, what does Gilby make of all this? Is Gilby Gilby fitting in well in the group? Is he like totally oh. assimilated by now? Oh, Gilby. Uh, let me tell you a little story about Gilby. Um, he had three weeks to learn 50 songs right before <laughs> we came out, and we started in Boston, and um, and I was really nervous for Gilby. I'm like, Gilby, you okay? He was right before the gig, the first gig. He's like, yeah, why? <laughs> and I'm nervous. And, and Slash going, Gilby, is everything going to be okay? And he's like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> why? Would you guys you know, settle down? Um, Gilby takes everything, you know, he, he's, he's so mellow about everything. Yeah. And he's such a good player. And he's very confident. Yeah. So, you know, um, Gilby, yeah. how, what does Gilby think of this whole thing? <laughs> He's like, cool, can I have a sandwich? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> See ya. You, you guys have, <laughs> you guys have a, uh, another keyboardist on board now? We have Teddy. Yeah, Teddy Zigzag. Mm -hmm. who's, um, who's Teddy? Where does he come from? Teddy, uh, he toured with Carole King. Um, he has a band back in L.A. Uh -huh. also. Is this uh, the connection with Slash working with Carol King? Is that how this came about? Or? No, no, we, we've known Teddy for quite a while. Um, uh, just a friend. How it started off is he helped us find the, the horn players we have yeah. and the backup singers. And then we said, well, let's get Teddy on board, too, because he plays everything. Yeah. And he's a great singer. So, so uh, that's just how it worked out. Basically. Okay, since so since starting out, Guns N' Roses has now added like two keyboard players, backup singers, horn section. Yeah, but uh, okay, everybody thinks that it's throughout <laughs> it's the, the whole show, but it's not. They only play on three songs. Oh, okay. So it's still just the band. Yeah. You know, um, 
as opposed to using emulators, which are synthesizers, which, yeah. uh, or, or tapes, which I, I hate to say, but uh, about 98% of the rock and roll bands out there use tapes. No. <laughs> which everybody knows. <laughs> you know, as opposed to using tapes, you know, we're like, we're not going to use tapes. We're a rock and roll band, man. Yeah. You know? It's like, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Um... So we, we got the real thing. We yeah. got real horns, real backup singers. Yeah. You know, it's it's such a cop out to um, to use tapes. Yeah. It's like if you if you can't make make the the music that that you love that you know it takes love and 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 it takes every emotion, love and hate and and joy and everything to to create a song. Now, you can't. Um, you can't emulate love, joy, hate, mm -hmm. you know, um, heartbreak through a tape. You True. know, you have to do it live. So, to all those bands, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have fun with your money. Um, maybe we can work money since he's here. Wait, would you like to be worked in? Yeah, I'm just I can grab you. Come on. Did the truck come and party. pick you up? Would you, you like to me? hug on camera or something? Or or did, Earl, did Earl come down? Earl. Maybe we can get this Rolling Stone thing quick and then we'll get the guys together for okay. a couple. Sure. The, uh, the, you want to do a Westwood one? It'll be live tomorrow night. Whatever. He, see, he's my publicist. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll be live. That, that, it'll be live tomorrow night. Right. It'll be on tomorrow night. Whatever. I'm, I'm, this, I'm you and I, man. No problem. The brothers. That's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> What are you going to do? I just wanted to do your film guy. He says he's shot like 100 hours of tape and film today. Over 200. What are you going to do with this stuff? We're making a movie. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's like um, a dramatic uh, movie. Or... Well, uh, I can't really tell you too much about it because we're kind of sworn to secrecy a little bit, but um, it's documentary. Um, it's also the videos will be intertwined. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you notice some of our videos don't really make sense, they will. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, there's like the endings of like, <laughs> say don't cry, mm -hmm. and, and November Rain uh -huh. will be coming out tomorrow night, right? Right. Okay. The endings are like, kind of leave you up in the air, <laughs> to say the least. So there's a story somewhere that's gonna be put together yeah, in this movie. Yeah, so there's some things going on, and and for me to really tell you everything would, would really kind of spoil the, spoil the fun of, of the antici anticipation of when, seeing this. When's this going to be out? Knowing us, it's probably about <laughs> five years. Is the, I, is the band used to practicing with that axle now? I mean, is that just normal? You can go on and just get the band together and you don't need oh, to Oh, yeah. Um, well, Axel, you know, he rehearses on his own in his room and so on and so forth. And, um, um, we play all the time, so it's that's like a rehearsal, you know. Yeah. Okay. So it's all right. Okay. This is, we're doing something on this magazine, actually. I wonder what this means to you. I don't know. Do you get excited when you see yourself on the cover of this, or do you think it's a piece of shit, or uh, <laughs> or what? But we're on MTV. Well, yeah, but that would be edited out. I'm not gonna. Know. I'm not gonna show him to or show Rolling Stone. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, being on the cover of Rolling Stone is like. Um, like what? I, I, I'll go back to when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. I never thought I'd be on the cover of Rolling Stone. <laughs> um, um, what does it mean to me? I mean, are you a long-time reader of the thing? Did you always read it when you were a kid? Well, you just know it's there, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, of course I did, and, you know? Seeing Led Zeppelin on the cover of Rolling Stone, yeah. the Rolling Stones on the cover of Rolling Stone. Right. Um, this goofball on the cover of Rolling Stone. <laughs> You're on the cover of Rolling Stone. No, I'm Spin. Rolling Stone wouldn't put me on the cover. Oh, Spin? Yeah, because they say I'm nothing but hype, you know. <laughs> okay, fuck Rolling Stone. <laughs> did you agree with what they said about you guys? I mean, do you like the stories they do on... Jukos well, we have a good friend at the Rolling Stone. <laughs> Luckily. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, Spin's amazing. that hates us. Why is that? Bob Guccione. Wow. That shit. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, I'll, uh, being on the cover of Rolling Stone twice, um, you go into every supermarket and you see yourself. Yeah. And, and everybody sees you, and it's, it's, 
it's it's too much for things like this are too much for me to really take in you know um you know my mom calls me (laughs) says i saw you at safeway you know (laughs) and and that stuff you know i'm i'm serious um it, it really, it, it, it's, for me to really think about it would, would I think, maybe screw me up a bit. <laughs> okay, so well, I'm I, sorry, I didn't want to. No, 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 no. <laughs> so I, I go home and I go to my dogs and, and I play with them. And, you know, that's how I deal with it. And I, I, I had a pig and, and I had to give him away, though. You had a pig? Yeah. Why? Hot belly pig. Why did I give him away? No, why'd you have a pig? Because I like pigs. Okay, all right. I like pigs too. I collect little pigs, but we can talk I, about that I later. I do too. I, I collect do. pig stuff. How many do you have? Pig things? I mean, I've got a lot of pig stuff. I've got a lot of pig well, stuff. Well, I've really got a lot, though. I've really got a lot of pig <laughs> stuff. <laughs> all right. Uh, what are you trying to tell me? Oh, well, actually, we got a, Steph's got actually. another thing to do, so we well, can do Lenny here. But we were talking about pigs. Why don't you guys talk until Wendy comes? Oh, man. He's, he's all right, man. In New York, man. He, well, he taught my pig how to fly, but it didn't land very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I know. It was raw. I was on the road, man. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, all right, go ahead. So, how did you guys get together? What's the what's the Lenny Guns kind of thing? When when did you uh, become friends with these guys? Well, um, I'll tell you. First of all, um, we heard Lenny's first record, mm-hmm. and Slash and I, we would. Um, it was like our favorite record to. Um, how to put this? Be with be with a woman with. <laughs> how do you say the that? Hand holding music kind of thing. Well, you know. Well. <laughs> Okay, I think we um, understand that. You know yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, we, we got like uh, promotional copies of it, so we got it like way You didn't buy it? You didn't buy it, right? I bought it. I got all kinds of copies of your record. <laughs> Records. Because I keep losing them. Because I take them everywhere. You leave them at the women's house. Like, no, 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 it's a one woman. But anyway, so, so you heard his record and you said, so, what a talent. So, right? yeah. Um, and, and Slash and I, especially, we were just in love with it, you know. And um, we got the pleasure of meeting Lenny, uh, opening up for Tom Petty, right. way fair. back when. And um, it's been a family since then, really. We just we just gelled, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We think the same. And and actually, Slash and Lenny uh, went to the same high school. Went to high school together, yeah. We were in the hallways most of the time, though. Yeah, yeah right. Hmm. But, uh, you told them the story. Yeah. Well, no, just I went to school with Slash and mm-hmm. met them, yeah. re-met them, and you and yeah. Slash yeah. and I recorded uh, together on my album. Yeah, yeah. On Always on the Run, Fields of Joy. And you recorded with me on my record. That's right. I sang a song on Duff's solo record. Yeah. And uh, we just hang. We do the <laughs> hang thing. When it, we're right, like when we're in New York, we hang out in the. Uh, um, when he's in LA, we hang yeah. out or wherever, and and, and we're just buddies. Yeah. That's, that's mutual respect. Mutual it, respect. Thank you very much. What's it like playing up there with Guns and Roses playing behind you? Is it, oh, uh, it's great, man. I've been waiting a long time to uh, <laughs> to get to actually play live with them. And so they called me a week or so ago and said, "Come to Paris and wow. play." And today in rehearsal, it went really well. It went really well. It went really well. <laughs> God, that's great. <laughs> I'm excited. God, we had a great time. Um, yeah, Slash was saying earlier how um, um, we didn't like that song because he wrote, you know, always the on the right. The Lick, right? right? And then he did it with you, and the thing's great, you know? So now it's like, God, why didn't we do that song? <laughs> so now we're doing it. Yeah, now we're doing it. That's just sort of the way it could have been, right? So you can tag along for any other dates on, on the European tour, or going to be a pop out the pop out um, in the states. Or? I don't know. You never know what happens. I might not want to go home. You know, I don't know. Hey, but I you should stay out with us. Yeah, maybe. You know, come out and do a little tap dance every night. You know, <laughs> join the band. Man. Hey, everyone else hey, is. But, yeah, no. I'm going to do it. What a good band! I can it play is. tuba or something. <laughs> You know how to play too? No, but I'll... <laughs> or strings. The only thing missing is strings. Yeah. You know, if you could just you get do. that together, it would be good. You, yeah, Lenny plays accordion. No. <laughs> really? You do yeah. it. So, you know. What do you play on accordion? Uh, Bar Mitzvah hey, song. Hey, 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 Lady hey, of Spain, hey, hey, kind of. Yeah. Really? <laughs> That's you know, the uh, the bunny hop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, the, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> really? <laughs> the bunny hop. <laughs> 
I used to go to lots of bar mitzvahs. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, that's good. Matt, I think no, they want you out there. That's <laughs> great. Brilliant. You, you know out of the whole interview, the accordion is the one people are going to remember. The bunny hop or the alley cat? Which one is it? The alley cat. The alley cat. The alley cat. Oh. What's the bunny hop? Oh, much older. Right? I met the alley cat. I fucked up. Shit. Can we do that again? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> How you doing? Um, okay, good to see you.